Hi, I'm Delta Work, and it's time for a new episode of Very Delta. It's time for a cocktail, and Mrs. Kasha Davis is here. But first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. Hi, I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite interesting people to sit on the couch and get very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who knows the difference between a body splash and a body spray. Today's show is just fabulous, but first, let's get into some things that are very Delta. What business do you have in public that is so important that you have to be on speakerphone? The speakerphone element to a phone is essentially there so that you can put your phone on speaker and set it next to you and take care of some business that needs both of your free hands. So maybe you're at home cooking and you're talking to someone and you're like, I'm going to put you on speaker while I mix up this cake batter. Or I'm going to put you on speaker while I have my lunch in my car because I want to have both hands while I bite my hamburger. But why do people put speakerphone on for every single conversation, especially when they're in public? Why do you want everyone to hear what's going on in your phone conversation? Are you uh, making big money moves? Are you talking about really important things and you want everyone to know that this business is so important Everyone in the room should know you are powerful, you are a mogul, you have so many things that you want to say and need to say. You're so happy for someone, you're so angry with somebody, you're so defiant that you need to be on speaker and you need to tell somebody, well, I told her this and I don't really care what she thinks because I'll get my lawyer on it. I'm not really concerned about it. I don't really care what you have to say and I told her, I let her know about herself. Why are you doing that? Why can't you have these kinds of conversations in private? Why does everyone have to be part of that? Also, too, are you telling the person on the other end that you're on speaker? Because oftentimes I've had people call me and be on speakerphone and not tell me that I'm on speakerphone and be in the presence of other people that are hearing my information about finances, about reservations, about places I'm going to be going about people I don't like, about any other concern that I don't want anyone other than the person I'm in the phone conversation with to hear. And everyone's hearing that. And then they have to like turn it off a speaker. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, 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 sorry. I was on speaker. Don't say that. So-and-so is here. I don't want them to know how much you spent on that present. I don't want you to... Then don't be on speaker. Or better yet, just tell the person, hey, I'm in the dining room. And all these other people are here. So now I wanted to talk to you about the church social. That seems safe. That way I know and I can say, all right, I can surmise in my mind, these are the things that I'm comfortable saying. And then I will give you a private text message later, or I will call you later and say, hey, how about you don't put me on speaker because we have some sensitive things to talk about. Not everybody wants to be on speaker. You are not making big, people that are making big money moves, people that are launching careers, people that are fucking sinking ships, they're not on speakerphone. So it's not a flex. It's not sickening. Don't tell me that you're just really busy and you're more comfortable that way. You're doing it so other people look at you. That's why you're doing it. It's like you're the same person that's backing into a parking spot for 15 minutes because you want everybody to go, whoa, whoa. You're not afraid of anybody. Bitch, you'll tell it like it is. No one's thinking that. You're thinking that, but no one else is thinking that. Everyone else is thinking like, we're in Target in the dog food aisle. Shut the fuck up. Please shut up. 
Turn your phone off a speaker. Nobody cares. No one's interested. We all have the same things going on. We know you're a bad bitch. You carry a Birkin. You don't chase dick. Like, we get it. We really get it. But, like, you don't have to do all that. You don't have to tell us how mad you were at your sister and how you're not going to show up and she better not look at you sideways. Like, save it. Save it. We all have the same problems going on. Don't put it on speaker. For God's sake. There's almost a cadence in the way that they walk, the way that they carry themselves when they're in this sort of speaker phone moment. And it's and these aren't always FaceTime videos. These are people actually talking on the phone. No one's looking. And they're carrying the cell phone. And it's like they walk around with it, just sort of flashing it like, oh, God, I'm so busy. I Oh, oh I'm oh, am I still on this call. Oh, my God. Uh, how much are these flowers here? Uh, girl, do you see these flowers? How much are these? Um, anyway, um, uh, I'm not really that concerned about what's going on. Um, oh, I'm in other conversations over here. I'm looking at this. Oh, yeah. I also wanted to tell you, um, no lobster. I don't want to do any of that. Um, let them know I want ranch. If you're going to stop by, get me two extra packets of ranch for my salad. And um, I, and they have to flop the phone around like this. It's like on the shoulder, and then it's this way, and then they're. Uh, what was that? Oh, uh huh. Oh no, that's. Too, oh no, she wanted me to buy this over here. Yeah, no, I'll just tell you later. No, no, it's fine. I don't want to talk about it. Um, and then they're looking over here, and then they're looking at this here and this one over here, and then they're back on the conversation. Um, no, I just I came to Target just to get a few. No, I just called you. Um, I just wanted to know what you were doing. I mean, you wanted to know what somebody was doing. You couldn't send them a text message and say, hey, I'm on my way to Target. I was going to stop by here before I went to your house. Is there anything that you need at Target while I'm here? Instead, you turn that conversation on the second you walk into Target and you have to walk the perimeter of the whole store. You don't even have a dog and you're in the dog food aisle. You don't even you don't even celebrate Christmas and you're looking at Christmas wreaths and all you're doing is talking on the phone about how ugly everything is and how tired this is and oh god I've got to make sure and do this tomorrow oh what oh you don't know her why are you bringing up names about people that somebody doesn't even know you're doing that because you want this conversation to last longer so people are watching you going wow that person's powerful they they can't even they can't even put the phone against their ear and their mouth because their hands have to be free. They have to emote. They have to ask about orchids. And they have to know, like, if I did buy a dog, like, I would buy Beneful. Like, they they want everyone to know, like, these are the things that are going on in my life. And, in fact, this phone is now too heavy to carry. Like, I have to, I'm going to have to just rest it here. It's actually, it's actually a walkie-talkie now. It's this way. And I have to talk on, I, hello? Huh? Oh, you're there? Okay. Well, yeah, I'll wait for you. And then they're at the drive through and then they're like, uh, oh, hold on. What did you want? You couldn't have texted before you got to the drive through to ask what they want. I've even seen people hold the phone out to the drive through and say, tell them what you want. So you're going to put a microphone into another microphone because you're too fucking lazy just to ask someone. That's not very Delta. I only talk on my speakerphone when I'm at home. Or when I'm in my car. That's the only time I would do it. I would never think to make other people uncomfortable in a public space. I'm also not the person that turns on videos at a restaurant and then just starts playing them at full blast so that everyone around has to listen to that or has to talk over that. I absolutely understand people that have that. I absolutely understand there's people in this world that have additional needs that, uh, you know, have uh, maybe... Uh, social anxiety or, ch or children that that need to need to have a piece of electronic equipment in order to sort of get through the day. I absolutely have space for that and I have time for that. But what I don't have time for is people that are like, oh, I just don't like the music that's playing in this communal place. Let me put this on full blast while you sit next to me and you're having a conversation and I'll just blast it. And too bad. I don't have time for that. I just I think it's unacceptable. Again, I do make space for people that are obviously experiencing something emotionally or psychologically that you are not experiencing or I'm not experiencing, but I don't have time for people that are doing it just to be defiant because they're like, well, it's my lunch hour, so I'm sitting next to you and fuck off. I don't have space for that.
If you're showing someone a video at a restaurant, you can lower it to about halfway and say, did you see this video? Or you can say, I have the video for you. I'm going to text it to you. Listen to it later. You're going to die. Or you can say, oh my gosh, remind me about the video when we get outside. But you cannot just sit at whatever restaurant you're sitting at. And I think it's absolutely okay to just put on, you know, Shania Twain or whatever and be like, I'm going to watch Shania Twain videos while I sit here and everyone else is having conversations full blast and they have to start talking over it like this. I'm so sorry. Was I, I'm trying to talk over that person's video. Come on. Like a, just a little self-awareness, like a little bit. Do you want to see me take a break? Because I think you want to see me take a break. And welcome back. I am so excited because my very dear, very Delta audience, there's always time for Mrs. Kasha Davis. Woo! Hi. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. I am over the moon and delighted to be here. I am over the moon. Yes. I'm excited. You literally, literally just got off the airplane. I did. I, uh, I was enjoying those Delta cookies that mm -hmm. they have on the air. And then I thought to myself, what can I do today? How about I jump over to your podcast? And here you are. <laughs> here we are. And here you are. Yeah, why not? And you were already dressed, hair done. You fly I mean, this way. I fly this way, as uh -huh. a lady would. I came right from Michael's Craft Store mm -hmm. and uh, thought to myself, let's go to you know L.A. and visit yeah. you. And here you are. And here we are. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, this is the new year. This is the new year. We are, um, you know. This time of year is always interesting because it's my it's my birthday is around this time. We've just wrapped up the holidays. We're supposed to be sticking to uh, resolutions right. or, or not having resolutions. Where are you in January? I mean, I have not believed in those revolutions because to mm -hmm. me, they're just they're just revolting is what right. they are. You know, because it's, what happens is you get yourself all stuck on this one thing, whether it's going to be your diet or your exercise. And then you do it for a few weeks and then that's it. Right. Right. I think what I have learned in my whole like recovery program of one day at a time is just be reasonable, find the balance. Mm -hmm. And I think that to me, New Year's Eve can be a little creepy, a little freaky, a little scary, especially with a lot of the things that are going on in the world. Right. It's simple. It's right. home life for me. It's my husband and kids, our dog, Max. And just to me, that New Year's Eve into the new year is a little bit of a reflection time, but just, you know, zen. Mm-hmm. You know, what's interesting is that I've I, obviously I've been to your home and it is when I first went there, I remember thinking like you, you never know, know what someone's home is going to look like. Right. If it's going to really reflect them or not. Your home is everything that anyone would imagine oh. Mrs. Kasha Davis's home to be. <laughs> first of all, when you drive there. Because you're kind of like, there's a slight over the river and, and through, through the, the woods, woods feeling. Totally. <laughs> and you get there and there's the long driveway and you get up and the dogs are greeting you right at the right. door. Yes. And you come inside and it's just decorated so beautifully. I mean, your home is so welcoming. It's 100% both, both of you are like ingrained in there. Well, that thank feeling. You. Yeah. Thank you. It's Well, when I think back to when I was a little boy, girl, gal, girl, boy, fella, uh -huh. I think about my father used to set up the train track and there was that tunnel yeah and i used to look at the train track under the tree and i would say to myself oh gosh i want to live in that neighborhood someday mm -hmm. as, a, as a child and so there's the one lane tunnel that you go in to our neighborhood and it feels like that and there's a deer and the, you know all the animals and and then in terms of decorating so much of mrs kasha davis is my mother and my grandmother mm -hmm. and we would have fun because if the Income was lower. We would rearrange things sure. and just make things, you know, and find bargains. And just to me, that's the fun of it. And then you've personalized. She used to always say, find a way to personalize it, personalize it with photos and family things and things that are meaningful from your travels. Right. Like this, I'm going to take home and put in my living room. You can have it. You can have anything. <laughs> Everything that's mine is yours. It's always been that way. I mean, I can, I can remember um, we were talking about pumps earlier, wearing, wearing pumps or stiletto shoes. And I remember I, there was a year that you were here and we were talking about the Jessica Simpson nude pumps. And we couldn't decide if we were an 11 or a 12. Right. And which one and that one. And you were like, just decide and I'll take the one that you don't want. <laughs> and I remember you took the, I think you took the 12. And I was like, I think they're too big for her. But you're, that's just the way your heart is. You were like, 
I'm just going to take these off your hands. I'll wear them. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. I feel like the second I met you so many years ago, we just became friends immediately. Yes. Because we see things through such similar eyes. Absolutely. And I also think that the drag family that you have out here on the West Coast is very similar to our drag family mm -hmm. at home with Aggie and Darian and... And obviously Pandora is now here, but just the, the, the way the vibe that you have mm -hmm. here with your sisters felt familiar. Mm -hmm. And I just love that. And, and to me, you know, I think drag is such a, a fabulous part of who I am as Ed that mm -hmm. I had to suppress so much for so many years mm -hmm. that if I can share that and be uh, open and positive and and loving and giving and generous, then that's, that's to me, that's a dream come true. Right. You know, anybody could be saucy and mean for on purpose. Right. Right. But to be generous and loving and mom-like, that's, right. that's to me what I think drag queens can, can bring to the table. And you emulated that immediately. I mean, we just, I tell Mr. Davis, my, one of my favorite memories is we were sitting in a dressing room, I'll just say somewhere in Palm Springs, uh -huh. and you were communicating through the mirror to me and just shifting your body weight, and we were laughing, and yeah. just, we didn't have to say a word. Yeah. We didn't have to say a word. And it was just that back, you know, the backstage vibe. This is so funny. I, 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 I talk to people about that, how you do have friends where um, you can just say drop a word about someone else and then you know what you're talking about. So <laughs> I was recently telling somebody that you'll look and, you, and you'll look over at somebody and they'll say green earrings and then they'll go, oh, oh shit, yeah. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> And it's just a thing. Yep. It's like without, and it's, you're not even really saying anything mean. It's just, you know, when you have a friend in the room that everyone knows, oh, this one's going to do too much. Here yeah, she yeah. comes. Here she comes. She's going to do too much. One of my favorite stories about that, I'll tell you real quick, is we were at a gig, myself and Darian and Aggie Dune, and this, we I bought some fishnets at, at, at a plus size store. Uh -huh. And I said, oh gosh, these don't fit. And the other queen that was there who was, uh, uh, had us there as guests said, oh, I buy those, but I wear medium. Oh, so she okay. left the room, uh -huh. and then Darian goes, poor fat Kasha. <laughs> <laughs> and then Aggie just keeps all night long, medium. medium. So whenever we see each other, it's medium, uh -huh. you know, because we remember that moment, and it's just hysterical. Right, you right. Know? That is so funny. <laughs> now, I would be absolutely remiss if I if we didn't talk about something that's really, really important to you, and I think is probably going to take over the world, and that's Imagination Station. Oh, my God. It's going to take over the world. It's going to take over the world. I truly hope so. And you know, I joke when I say little boy, girl, gal, girl, boy, fella. But when I think about my childhood and what wasn't there, mm -hmm. I think it's my honor and it's my responsibility to provide for children of all ages mm -hmm. something that wasn't there. The presence of someone on the internet or television and in this case, it's a children's television show. Right. And I have to give big thanks to Angela Washko from Workhorse Queen, the director, and also Mary Tabali Hoffman, who produces the live shows with me, for nudging me and saying, you love kids. Why not a children's television show? And the show, we filmed four episodes. We're working on finding a home. It is marvelous. It, there's a live show. And it's Imagine, Mrs. Doubtfire, mm -hmm. hosting Pee Wee's playhouse in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood and then that's Imagination Station. Right, right. You know, and yeah. Mr. Davis is there and all the people in the neighborhood and all of that and and it's full of joy and love and acceptance and kindness. Right. And I think that again, children of all ages are responding to it. Right. And uh, you know, I mean, again too, th this is a this is a strange time when so many people like yourself are um presenting something about inclusion, about love, acceptance, um, with, with parental supervision that's always there. Um, it's a scary time because there's a, a big portion, a decent portion of, of, of the nation that is coming out against that. The world. Yeah, the world. There are people in politics who are finding ways to sexualize it, mm -hmm. finding ways to make it uh, this grooming and all these other words. If you come to a drag, what I say to those people, first of all, is actually come and watch one. Right. Have your opinions, if that's what you feel you need to have, I suppose, but come and watch any of the drag story hours that are happening. And if you open a children's book, 
It's about kindness, love, acceptance, patience, manners, all of the things that not just, those books are not just written for those children. It's right. for the parent reading the book or the grandparent right. as a reminder for them because we are all, as I say, children of all ages that could find and need those inspirations. Right. So to me, there are those people out there in the world that are full of fear and full of fear gets covered up with anger. And so now we're going to attack. Right. And they don't know what they're missing. They don't know what they're, they, they don't want to, they don't want to see it, but it's so genuine and honest. And I would love to put together a how to for some of the drag queens doing story hour, because I believe that sometimes some of the choices of where the story hour is being presented mm -hmm. can be a, an issue. For instance, if you are in a publicly funded space, people are going to have an opinion. But if you're in a theater or a private space, it's less likely, hopefully, right, to be, you know, protested, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, you have to play to your audience and you should think about playing to your audience. And so that that comes into play. But it has been such a joy, uh, something I would never have expected that I would be doing. Right. And uh, as as that man who stayed in the closet and married uh, a, a woman and we were together for a long time wanting to have children. I thought, how am I ever going to find my way and be a, what can I be? Can I be a teacher? What can I do? Who would have ever thought that as a drag queen, I can do this and have these, these, the television show or the story live and, 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 and celebrate positivity and being who you are and following your dreams. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's a dream come true. It's fierce. It's fierce. I mean, I really feel like I've known how long you've been putting this work into this. And it's a passion. It's passion, but it's 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 easy to call something like this a passion project, but it's really necessary. It's really important. It's so necessary. Yeah. Some of the, my favorite moments at the story hour would be, of course, the interaction with the kids. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, when a dad comes up to me in tears and says, thank you so much for showing me that my child has a community. Right. Uh, the grandfathers in tears saying, you really touched me today with your words about love and acceptance, and I learned a lot today. Mm -hmm. So the kids, when they go to story hour, they're like, oh, Mrs. Kasha Davis likes a sparkly dress and big hair, and she loves to read books, and she lives at the theater. Right. They accept it as it is. But right. a lot of times, who I'm performing for are the people that brought the kids. Yeah. I've never done like a story hour. I've never done, um, I mean, obviously, yeah, all ages events that are like maybe like during the day in a restaurant where someone has their kids there. Uh, I've been around that. Um, so I, I don't I don't I don't feel like I'm well versed in how, how to approach that. So I think when you're saying you would have like a how to, I think that would be really necessary because there are people that could contribute to that. I feel like I could have um, a um, a how to on how to make dads cry. <laughs> I could do that because I've done Absolutely. that before. Yes, I've done that before, well, and, gra and grandfathers too. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually pride myself on that. Yeah, I'm sure you they have. don't know why they're crying, but then they leave like <laughs> questioning everything. Like, yeah. why do I feel so bad about myself? What have I done? And you know, you get compared to Darian Lake a lot, so I'm right. very familiar with that kind of humor, and it's fantastic. She's been making people cry for years. She has been making people cry, mostly since men. Day one, since mostly day one. Men. Yeah, yeah, and I she love that. she is not. Someone who should do a story time for but children. But she knows it. She knows it. She and should she, be doing Red Shoe Diaries. That's <laughs> yeah, what she, she should be doing. She absolutely should not. Um, but and she just finds the humor. She loves to shock. She uh -huh. loves that, and and it's and it's very exciting and very fun. Well, and then too, I mean, even like on a real on a real note about that, just as you said, like there are people that are really great for this, and then there are people who you know, it would take so much work for them to do it that if it wasn't coming from the heart and they really weren't uh, that interested in what could come of it um i feel like it's because you're breaking such ground with this i feel like you're breaking ground with it and i think people know that that's why they're scared right um that that there has to be a certain face to something especially in the beginning especially in the beginning when we're trying to launch it, there has to be a decorum and a way and an understanding just as you said to explain to people that this is for the parents as well right it's not just for kids we know that children don't know that something is supposed to be wrong with something unless you tell them right so if they see something as just love and acceptance they're like oh okay you know i have uh uh my partner's nephews 
started asking questions like, well, why, why are you with Uncle Davey? What, are you his friend? And when you answer those questions with, with their parents, their parents were there, of course. But and I took I, I took the parents lead because I was like, I don't know what you want me to say to your children. Right. That's not my place. But when you do have that conversation and the parents are open to say, oh, these people have a home like we do. These people live together like we do. Like they don't know that there's something wrong because no. they they have been taught. Oh, you mean you breathe and you eat food and you <laughs> right. love one another and you don't want each other hurt. And so you have a household together. OK, my, my family, there's five of us and three of us are gay. And so my brother said, my kids have only been to gay weddings. Oh, wow. You know, and oh, wow. they attended the wedding and uh, the, all my nieces and nephews came up with all these. They had we had coloring books and things because they're so young, just stuff to do during dinner. And they came up with all these 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 colored photos with hearts and love oh. and all this stuff. So they get the they get the feeling, as they say. Uh, uh, when I was younger, I remember parents saying, like, they don't understand. If there's an argument happening in the kitchen, the kids don't understand. No, they understand. Mm -hmm. They understand all of it. Mm -hmm. And you could go into, you know, we come to this earth understanding things, whatever. They feel it. They feel mm -hmm. the energy. And so I, I, I truly believe that they understood that we loved each other. Right. And certainly as some of my uh, nieces and nephews got older, they would ask questions like, so why are you all dressed up in drag every weekend? Right. I'm like, because it's fabulous. And they're like, it is. Let's go play. Yeah. You know, if you yeah. answer it honestly. I remember early on in my relationship with Mr. Davis, we were hiding Mrs. Kasha Davis. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden one night, I remember, you know, through the years coming out of the closet and thinking I was hiding again. And I'm like, why am I, why am I hiding this? Something that I love and I'm having so much fun. Why am I hiding and sneaking out after they go to bed? Right. So I said, that's the last time I'm doing that. So the next morning, we said, we're going to have a conversation. Well, those kids, I mean, two young girls, they were like, okay. Right. And the next thing you know, they're doing shows for us just like kids do uh, on the weekends. And they're dressing up. And uh, my one of our favorite mem memories is the youngest, Jessica, comes up in all different animal prints. And she's like, I'm a crazy zookeeper. Oh, my God. <laughs> You know what I mean? We just, it, they're just, it's just dress up. I mean, if I think about the first man I saw in a dress, it was a church. I went to the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Uh -huh. He was a gorgeous gold gown with a, and a crown with gems. And I was like, I want to be like him. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then they sent me to altar boy camp, which is a whole nother story. Right. Is there a crazy zookeeper coming to Imagination Station? <laughs> there should be, right? There should be. Of yes. course. It's, of her course. name is Aggie Dune. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop you there. Let's take a break. Yeah. We'll be right back. And we are back with Mrs. Kasha Davis, <laughs> who I am privileged to call Mrs. Well, I'll start that again. And we are back with Mrs. Kasha Davis, who I am privileged to call just Kasha Davis. Yeah, just Kasha. we've known each other forever. I That's mean, right. I tell other people... Oh, I'm going to go see Mrs. Kasha Davis. But, you know. Well, nobody can get that right. That was a mistake. Okay. I love being Mrs. Kasha Davis. It's like Mrs. Garrett, mm -hmm. you know, Facts of Life. and Girls, Mrs. girls. Mrs. Like, girls, girls, you know, all the Mrs. Right. And uh, it's, oh, gosh, Miss Katya David. Um, oh, okay. Davies. Uh -huh. I think it's the most basic name. And right. It's first pet, first street, Kasha Davis. Boring white poodle Simple. from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Simple. Yeah, I love that. Um, you are uh, also very, very active in your brunches. Yes. Which I feel like, you know, we started doing, uh, casually doing brunches many, many years ago at Hamburger Mary's, like small. I mean, this was to the time when we were um, making, Tammy Brown was uh, would make flyers on index cards and, and would <laughs> hand them out. So we were doing them lightly, and then they started to develop and more and more and more. But I feel like definitely over the past maybe five years, drag brunch is really where people are introduced to drag in person. Yes. Yeah? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I cannot even get over it. So I was first doing drag brunch mm -hmm. here at yeah. the Hamburger Mary's, and then we said, let's do a drag brunch back at home. And we started at Edibles, and we were there at a restaurant for, I don't know, 12 years or so. And then I went to a, an event called Flip Phone Events, mm -hmm. and they have these drag brunches with 200 to 300 people at mm -hmm. Macy's. 
in Chicago and New York City. And I'm thinking to myself, why aren't we doing that in, in Rochester? And the audience is primarily, primarily straight. Mm -hmm. They heard about RuPaul's Drag Race. They heard about drag. They're interested and they want it in the form of brunch. Right. And the fun thing about brunch is for those that drink, there's always time for a cocktail. Right. You can have that booze in the daytime and nobody's counting it. So you can right. get hammered and go back and do your your <laughs> weekend chores. Very true. You know, so people just have such a great time. And to me, I think it's, again, it's a fantastic situation where you have people being introduced to drag queens and we are sometimes going to do something a little bit uh, political or we're going to push the edge and on the microphone and our hosting and we're opening people's eyes to this is just a bunch of people having a great time together. Right, right. It's not about gay or straight or this or that. Right. And I love it. I love, I love, what I love about brunch when you say, you know, it's mostly a, generally uh, a straight crowd. I love that crowd. I feel like that crowd uh, especially if they're new to this right. and they've never seen this kind of entertainment. Um, for me, like my tar like the target audience that usually responds very, very well to me is like older couples. And when I say older, I mean my age, yeah. <laughs> you know, over 45 or right. whatever. Um, but what happens is sometimes people will bring like family members, like like their aunt or something, and they'll say, oh, she's oh, I'm just so nervous how she's going to respond. And there's never an issue they because have a blast. they especially like men and women of a certain age that that are heterosexual straight however whatever term you want to use um they watch it and they're like I'm not surprised I understand what's happening yeah. I'm not stupid like I know you're not trying to be here to like convert me into marrying you or this is a piece of entertainment this is theater that's not taking place maybe in a theater right but I'm not going to get up and, and and walk across. I'm not going to pull on you. I'm I get it. Like and so that's always a I, I had a, a a couple that came, um, and I was on the microphone and and the man seemed a little quiet. He was probably in his seventies. He seemed a little quiet and I was asking like, "Are you enjoying yourself? And is any of this a surprise to you?" And this was this was years ago. But I said, "Is any of this a surprise to you?" And he said, "Oh, honey, I was in Vietnam." None of this is a surprise <laughs> to me. A... And I thought, well, he's seen the best. Right, you know what yeah. I mean? Like he's seen the So that's it's such a it's such a great space to be in. And sometimes and I love being, you know, performing for gay crowds, but you sometimes perform different content for me for a gay crowd because maybe they don't want the sing along. Right. They like the stuff with dialogue in it or something that's like a little bit different and maybe more niche right. makes sense to them. Um, because then if they get the sing along at a night show, they're kind of like, Oh God, we've seen it. One more Shania Twain, <laughs> huh? But in a group of people that are out for the day, they want to sing along. They want to sing along. They want to have a good time. And what I think in the business aspect of it is that they're willing to pay the price for the mm -hmm. the ticket for the show along with the the brunch you can you, it's financially a great gig yeah it is you know yeah, it so is. I, I have to laugh some people are our, our brunches are you know uh not cheap they're yeah. they're they're it's great entertainment it's great food uh sometimes the drinks are included this that now depending on the venue then some of the of our competitors in town will be like cheapest brunch in town that's a great idea gals yeah i mean <laughs> yeah I mean, that's get what you pay for. Right, you get what you pay yeah. for. And so, yes, there there's definitely an opportunity for different, you know, uh, types of uh, price ranges and things. But I think, you know, why not elevate it? Why not? After all these years, I mean, the the group of us, Aggie, Ambrosia, myself, and Darian, we're fifty and up. Yeah, you know, it's time for us to 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 be celebrated. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I would. What what I'm waiting for is because. The things that you're sitting on and the things that you're working on could take place so many places. And I know you're only one person, but baby, I am waiting for Mrs. Kasha Davis to just launch brunches across the board and say, these are my people on the West Coast. These are my people in the Pacific Northwest. These are my people in Central. And I want you to do this. These are my story right. hours. I mean, this is like you you deserve well, you deserve you. like a a whole think tank of people and an office space where all this could be launched. You know, we've all been talking about this for years about all the different management teams that there are and but there's more to just than than just management teams. There's people that need to come up with these events that know these events from the inside out. You know these events from the inside out. Right. And you know, I I I like to talk to a lot of the new gals that are cast on uh drag race and say, "Listen, it's not about the gig. 
It's about the relationships you build with the promoter mm-hmm. as well as the other queens so that you can get booked for the next gig. Yeah. You know, I'm not one of these top tier queens that gets bookings like this. You've, it's a business and you've got to work for it. And I think that that is, that is what I would do. I mean, I would never tell somebody what they can or can't do on stage, but I would have certain expectations of professionalism. Absolutely. And I loved, I mean, I think you had some... A one-time uh, post before about all the different th- expectations about being on time and, you know, your drag is put together and it doesn't matter what song you choose to do, et cetera. But, you know, I think we need that sometimes because not everybody is meant to be the manager. I mean, I did most of my professional career in management. Right. So I see where that piece can be. Aggie's always like, you know what? You're a great performer, but you're a better manager. Shade. That's Shade. so funny. <laughs> Well, you know, and Jules, you know, Jules, like Jules will tell people all the time. And I, and uh, you know, Jules has been entertaining for years. Yeah. She's a wonderful entertainer, but she says to people, I don't consider myself a performer. Right. I consider myself a host and somebody who manages and plans events. Right. That's what she considers Jules her and strength I are very to be. Similar that way. Yeah. yeah. She loves that part of it. And, uh, you know, that's. That's where she sees the focus, and there's all there's a lot of people, myself included, who I love to host a show. I don't particularly like doing the let's talk numbers, let's right. do this, that, and the other. I don't feel comfortable with it just because I have spent so much time as the entertainer, and then also as the host, and then also as the uh, management person. Something's got to give. Yeah, in it's there. a different skill set, and the, the idea just like I don't like to do hair. Mm-hmm. Or make my clothes. Right? Uh-huh. I'm not Amish. I have right. patchwork designs right. to make fabulous outfits. Now you know, and <laughs> but I when that. I look at you know when I look at that situation, I think of a, a, a one of the casinos that we're working with, and they said we'd like to uh, expand. We sold out in three days. We want to move to the ballroom, uh, but your prices aren't going to go up. I said absolutely they will. Yeah. and they were like, <laughs> I'm not afraid to tell you. I mean, let's, why if you're going to expand to a ballroom that you know can seat 300, right? We're not going to do it for $50. Right. And I think people still think that. Like I think and they're they're only willing to do that. And I get the idea of small businesses saying this is all we can do because we're like a small queer business whatever. There's considerations to be Absolutely. taken. But when we're talking about big money and you can tell the person's like, "Oh no, we're making money off this, but we don't want to share any of it." There's a problem there. There's a problem there. And yeah, yeah. And I don't want to sound too greedy because I think you're absolutely right. You want to look at a business and say, how do we get, again, how do we get booked back mm-hmm. and do another one here? And how can they make money? I want that business owner to be very excited right. at the end and want to book the next brunch. If we don't book the next brunch after that show, we've done something wrong. Right. Right. So they they had to have made money. So we will price accordingly. So I just want to make sure I say that. So, no, you know no, I, I mean? no. Like, I think know. people get that, that what we're talking about, especially when it comes to, you know, um, you know, a, a lot of people don't realize that every gig has its own considerations. Right. And they're not there's not an across the board thing, uh, you know, to this day. Yeah. Well, some people will will have never met me before. And they'll say, I've only known you through your podcast and I want to come see you at your show. And I had somebody come come see me at a local show and they said, I'm so surprised that no one's here to watch you. Oh, And I said, it does get a little quiet. It, it is a very intimate crowd. I didn't know what to say. Right. And they were like, it just seems weird because a lot of people listen to your podcast. And I said, the podcast is not a drag show. It's different. I'm in drag, but this is a weekly drag show. It's in the middle of the week. Um, the people that are listening to the podcast are all over all over the world. The people that live in this neighborhood already know me. They know that they can come here anytime and see me. They're not surprised or fascinated by it. But people who've never seen you are surprised and fascinated. Right. So they think, oh, I'm going to show up and it's going to be Victor Victoria. And it's going and then they're like, wait, <clears throat> this is just a bar. <laughs> like you're behind a sheet and you come right. walking out. Like, you know what I mean? And I love that. Well, the the other thing I think that's important to touch on there is that you are doing what you love. Yeah. And I am doing what I love. And I cannot stress enough that when you're doing what you love, other people will want to sabotage that. Not necessarily destroy it. But they'll want to, they'll look at this and be like, are you still having fun doing that? Can you make any money doing that? Yeah. What? Oh, isn't it great to just get all dressed up? I liken that that analogy of crabs in the bowl. Crabs, if you put a bunch of crabs in a bowl, one tries to get out and the other crabs try to pull it back down in. Because they these people may not 
be doing what they love in their life. They right. may not be following their heart and their dreams. Right. And to me, that's something I have to remember when somebody says something like, you know, oh, you know, I'm surprised that, I mean, you could, can you even make any money doing that? Mm -hmm. Or, oh, is, is that a career? I mean, does your husband, is he okay with you just going around and just having fun? Right. Yes, I'm having fun. I do what I love, but it's, I mean, it's work. You know, the same, I, I feel like that that's hundred percent true. And the same can be said for even people in our own industry who will watch you do something and then think, oh, there's only one person that can do that. So there can only be one fashion person and there can only be one kind person and right. there can only be one uh, irreverent person and there can only be one person who doesn't wear boobs and there can only, you know, there's all these ways about drag where people are like, there, there's only one that does that. So somebody else is already doing it better. And, they, you know, I've said it a million times. It's like there can be tons of blossoms on the same fucking bush. Right. Like everyone can blossom and you can go, oh, my gosh, you're doing so great with that. And you could say, oh, you're doing great with that. And I want to be part of it. And I'm happy for you. But this like this weird sort of competition. And it's like it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be. It and doesn't. Well, at first, when you see somebody doing something that you've always dreamt of doing, you get a little jealous maybe, sure. or you make a comparison. Human nature. Human nature. All of us. But if you can't, I mean, take a minute, sit in your dirty diaper, Yep. but then if you can't switch that to being happy for them, especially in a, an industry like a niche, it's still smallish, the drag industry, if you can't be excited for them because their success is our success. Mm -hmm. Your podcast helps people. Somebody's gonna see it and then they're gonna say, oh gosh, you know, Drag queens are doing podcasts right. now, you know, and so all of it, you know, somebody's huge tour only helps us to fill the seats at a brunch or whatever. And so if you can't think of it that way, you will be alone in your own dirty diaper for a very long time. That is so true. hundred percent. What a shitty position. What to a be in. shitty place to be. <laughs> are we okay, Mark? Yeah. Cool. Let's take a break. Yeah. Let's change those diapers. And we are back. I'm here. Just listen. We are cutting up, having a good time with yes. Mrs. Kasha Davis. Um, I asked you off camera because we were talking. I was using your hairspray, yes. which I loved. Um, and then we were talking about perfume. Do you have like a sort of a signature fragrance you like to wear in, in drag or a fragrance profile? Yes. Well, mine is good old Juicy Couture. Oh, uh-huh. That's good. It's just, yeah. and Fresh. And fresh. And it's a light fragrance. I just love it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I like that you can also purchase it at the discount at retailers like TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Yeah. And you know, they have other <laughs> versions of it too. They do. They yes. have like Juicy Malibu, mm -hmm. Juicy, uh, I think, Ooh La La. Right. Well, I've know. often c considered basic, right? Mm -hmm. People will be like, oh, she, her drag is basic. Oh, and, people think you're basic. Yes. Oh, no. And so, well, no, I, I'm fine with it. And it's my brand. So I just, you know, Go with the basic thing, and then the most basic fragrance I think you know is Juicy Couture. Really? Yeah, huh, I, I don't know that, that I chose it that way, but it, it kind of ties in with the narrative. I thought I was pretty basic because I always wear like Estee Lauder fragrances, so I always thought that was like considered basic to but, people. Well, a lot of the you know the other drag queens will say, "Oh, she wears nails. She has you know this particular look, so she's just a basic drag." Queen. Mm -hmm. but, you know, there's a place for all of us. There's a place for all of us. There's a place for all of us. <laughs> um, this is the segment of the podcast where we uh, read letters that people send in. So uh, sometimes they know who's here. Sometimes they don't know who's here. Okay. I think they usually don't know who's here. Right. But sometimes they do. Sometimes they're special letters. Yeah. Um, and if you want to send a letter, you can send a letter to readmedelta at gmail.com. You can send any kind of question you have about, I don't know, advice or recommendations. Or maybe you just have like a question that you think two other like-minded people might have an opinion on. So um, I'm going to read the first one. I okay. think I'm going to read it. Uh, let's take it out of here. Are you getting your reading glasses? Well, I'm just trying to get the letter out myself, but I put so many things in these drawers. Letter opener, of course. Oh, yes. Fancy, fancy. K1. I just learned the other day that these are properly initialed. By the way, Mark, I don't know why, but sometimes when these go through here, it rips the letter in half. Did you know that? You did know that? And you like that, don't you? It's just to make it more difficult. He likes to make my life difficult. Mm -hmm. He likes to make it. He likes to make it easy, but he knows that he's a a cruel mistress sometimes. <laughs> Hi, Delta and Kasha. 
I'm a first time listener, long time caller. No, first time listener. Okay, start again. Hi, Delta. I'm a first time listener, long time caller. I have an issue with cars using their horns and I wanted to see if you felt the same way. The horn is to notify someone that you are there when they can't see you. It is not there to reprimand people. I hate, <laughs> hate, hate when people think they're using their horn to tell someone off. If you ask me, not using your horn unless it's urgent is very Delta. Mm. Do you agree? Thanks, BB, JJ. Um, I do not like when people misuse their horn. Well, don't go to New York City. Yeah. It's like, like what is yeah. happening? <laughs> yeah. I um I I'm I'm a huge advocate of obeying uh traffic laws. Anything like that. I, I just I it's a big thing for me. Very big. Part of the drive that I make uh to the studio, I take through Griffith Park mm -hmm. and there's an area where like there's horses and all this stuff and people exercise and it's 25 miles per hour which I understand is very slow That's slow, yeah. but there's constantly people going through with golf carts because it's a golf course as well and it parallels the freeway so people see the freeway and they know that there's a freeway on ramp in the middle of all of this. Right. So they want to get to it. So in their mind, like, don't worry, I'm going to go real fast. I just need to get in there. Well, it's one, one, one road this way, one this way. So they try mm -hmm. to pass you and girl, I don't really honk my horn anymore. I agree with you, JJ. Like it's, I'm really not there to reprimand anyone, but I, what I am going to do is set my, um, Set my cruise control at 26 because I don't mind going like a little bit over. Just, just 26. And I just put on the radio and I just listen and I can see the cars lining up behind me. And I just drive along and I'm like, you can all oh. kiss my entire ass <laughs> while I drive along because it's 25 miles an hour. And you know what I always say? Being on time is being late. It's not my responsibility if you're going to be late. Right. Right. So I always get places early. So I don't have a problem. You were, you flew here and you were here early. Right. You were in the other room just dressing and talking and painting up and looking around and pressing your fingernails on because you said, I'm going to do something. I said I was going to do it. I'm going to do it. I think that is so important. Right. A lot of people don't give a shit. I am not a horn honker. Are you a horn blower? Uh, uh, woo, just ask Mr. Davis. Mm. Well, I'll tell you this. I don't know if you've noticed this, but since the pandemic, people drive crazier. There's no rules. There are no driving rules. I cannot believe. Now, we live in Rochester, New York, so it's we don't have the traffic that you have here right. at all. Maybe we're a little bit of rush hour traffic. Maybe. People are insane, cutting each other off. And obviously, uh, we know that everybody's got their cell phone. So we have distracted drivers. Right. So there, in that respect, maybe the horn is like, wake up, you know, because you're mm -hmm. checking your text or literally Darren and I were coming back from a gig and we were driving by and somebody was watching, watching TV or whatever on their phone and yeah. driving. I was like, oh my gosh, you're driving, you're alone in the car and you're distracted, right. that right. distracted. So it's insane to me. So maybe, you know, the horns are going to help. I, it always scares the crap out of me. Yeah. When somebody beats the horn. I'm like, what's happening? Like, did I, is, is, am I running somebody over? Is it a dog? What's happened? Now, not everyone knows that you're from Rochester specifically, but there's, w w tell me about garbage, garbage food or what is it? <laughs> there's a, there's a dish. A garbage plate. A garbage plate. Yes. It's a, a plate. A garbage plate. It is a Rochester just specialty. It okay. is fantastic. It, it is most especially uh, enjoyed in a, in, a, in a loving way when you have a couple cocktails. Okay. Right. So what happens is they just slap some macaroni salad, Love. cold, very cold. Love. Hot French fries, burgers yeah. or hot dogs, and then the 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 meat sauce on top. <gasps> and you get some fr to class it up, French bread. Oh, that sounds good. Just a little dip in. I'm telling you right now, you would not think that sounds like. No, oh, it sounds great to me. I mean, it's delish. Yeah. Now, I back in my previous job, I took a bunch of people out during the day for that for lunch with no cocktails, and they were like, "This is a lot." <laughs> oh, but no. it is definitely. It's oh, it's so. It's just. It just does it, and you would be like, "Why would I want it all mixed together?" You do. You do. You do. You do. You absolutely. Do. Like I've never had. Uh, what is it where it's like? 
fry, maybe it's fries and cheese curds and gravy and yep. uh, what is that? It's something, something Canadian. It's a Canadian yes. thing. And I know I would love it. I've just never had it, but well, I know. And if you go to like Erie, Pennsylvania, they put French fries on their sandwiches. Right on the sandwich. Oh, well, I Or in to... the salad. Oh, oh, I've never had it in a salad, but I have ordered a hamburger like from McDonald's. I like to get the combo that's two cheeseburgers mm -hmm. and fries. And I like to have it plain. So just cheese and the patty and the bread. And then I put my French fries inside of it and I eat <sighs> it like that. It's my favorite. Has McDonald's sent you a gift card for the diet sodas? No, they haven't. Tweet they it. They haven't sent me anything. They will send you the gift card. I have to get a Twitter account. Oh, that's right. Do well, you have a Twitter account? I do. Just but and the the followers just keep going down since I all, talk all too much. I can't be limited. <laughs> I I would be like, oh, we gotta edit that. Uh, I gotta yeah, edit yeah, that. Yeah. I can't get it all out in one sentence. All right, let's read another letter. Let's read another letter. Okay. This is yours because it says K two. Oh, is the right. second letter when Kasha is here. Got it. It should say M K D, but you know. Well, that's all right. I think we'll live. Ashkash Bagash. Yeah. Do you use a letter opener at home? I do, and I like. I still send Christmas cards, and I write notes. I send people thank I you love cards. It. You do. I know. I just. I ask because I don't know if you know, but I know. All right. Kia Ora Delta from New Zealand. I've been an avid listener of Very That and Very Delta from the very beginning. Nothing brings me more joy than when you go off. But I wondered <laughs> if you allow me to go off about something. I literally do not care about your spa pool. I don't want to get in your spa pool. Every time I'm at the residence of someone with a spa pool, they are adamant that we must get in said spa pool. I know you spent upwards of $5,000 on your spa pool, <laughs> but I'm not interested in justifying the purchase of your spa, spa pool. pool. I'm just a little self-conscious about my body, and I truly just hate sitting in hot human stew. Why are spa owners so obsessed with me getting in their spa, spa pool? pool? Thank you so much. I hope one day we can go to... I hope one day we can go or get off together. Ooh. Oh. Much love, James. James, if you want to get off, <laughs> you got to get in my spa, spa pool. pool. <laughs> That's where all the magic happens. We can get in the human stew, Ooh. have a garbage plate. Oh, yes. I'm into it a little bit. No, I, I've i never had anybody like sort of force me into that sort of feeling. I think if you don't want to get in, all you have to say is no. no like it's right. simple. Oh, no, thank you. I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. And when someone asks you again, you can say, hmm, I'm not really interested in that, but thank you again for offering. And then when they ask the third time, you can say, I'm not answering that question anymore because it's been answered twice. <laughs> right. Do you like to take a, a, a spa? Well, so we had, when we purchased our house, there there was the hot tub spa t pool mm -hmm. and we kind of grew out of it. It was just, it was nice. You know, it was, it was hot. First yeah. of all, it's too hot. I, yeah. I, I, I run hot as it is. And then it was for me and Mr. Davis and then. All of a sudden, if friends wanted to come over, it's like, like was said, human soup. And right. the worst place, already a cruise ship is can be a problem. And then when all of these strangers all get together in the hot tub spa pool, mm -hmm. I'm like, that's disgusting. Well, it's already I mean, seasoned because isn't it salt water? <laughs> it is. But yeah. I, and they're down there and they have their mouth in the water. And I'm and like, going blah, like blah, blah, blah. taking it in and like <laughs> spitting it out. <laughs> it yeah. grows. No, that's because they have that bucket of beer. Right. right. Do you right. like to go swimming? At the, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? We I like to just go in and like my mother used to do this thing where she wouldn't, wouldn't want to get her hair wet. Oh, so she would just kind of swim God, like that's pretty. <laughs> yeah. So just do that and get it. Uh huh. Just uh -huh. dip in. That's you know. pretty. And well, of course, we used to be all out in the sun with oil. Yeah. Back then, but yeah. now you don't do that. You stay in the shade. Um. Well, I mean, how how many? T I feel like Rochester's. We've got about be, two weeks of summer. I was going to say, you can't really get in the water <laughs> unless it's an indoor pool. No, it's Which not. smells. It's, mm, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a kidney-shaped pool. Apparently, it was a urologist at our house before. Is okay. What people in the neighborhood say. Okay. I don't know if that's a dad joke or if that's the truth, but it's cute. You know what I mean? And we we, we enjoy it. It needs, it's, our house is just constantly in need of a repair, you know, which is a fun. Minor repairs. But you know I, what I'm no, saying. You, like, things that you want improved. Right. But That's what it is. Things like that. But so the, picky, the picky. Well, no, particular, just, particular, particular. <laughs> I like my that. spa pool. I'm gonna you use know that. what? I don't think people really talk about when it comes to you. And I think about it all the time just because I feel like I'm a connoisseur in a way. You 
truly have in drag the best ratio and proportion of waist to breasts. Like you have the best boobs. Oh, geez, but, thanks. But your waist in proportion to your bust is so like extreme. Don't you think? I, wait, you know what? Look how small your waist is compared to your bust. Well, and then I'm, I've been adding the the derriere recently. Perfect. Uh, that's fine. It. Yeah. Well, honestly, the, 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 this, this, there's, this, a, there's a buoyancy yeah, there's that a, not everyone has. Well, there's giant shoulders, right? And so, okay. you know, it's all the proportions. The big hair. Mm -hmm. You've got to dress, you know, and uh, you don't have to, but I choose to. That's the look I like. My drag, as I was mentioning, my mother and my grandmother. My grandmother, I love to tell this story because- it's fun and funny. She, in the 30s and 40s, she was a vaudeville performer, and she oh. was a whistler. Okay. And she would host the shows, and she would whistle, and she had all these glamorous guys. And it was all of that wow. very put together, you know, these photos. And she would say, you know, I, I used to do this and, and perform. And I used to think to myself, oh, my gosh, I, I, I want to do that. I didn't know what I would do, but I just wanted. And so mm -hmm. I there's always, like, a little bit of a vintage Kind yeah, of always. That I like to have always. as a part of things in terms of my look. And I mean, Davey just does an incredible job with knowing how to dress a plus size body. Yeah, you guys are you, you're a good match because you have yeah. the same the same ideas of what you want to wear, or you know when it's like mm, this might not be the fabric, but it's pretty close. Right. Yeah, I love that. I love that. It's really it's he loves working with you. Oh my god. I mean, he's, he's you're his favorite. I listen. I, I have reached out to so many different designers over the years. Zippo, no, no response. Why is it because I'm older? Is it because of the shape? Is it because of the the style of drag? I don't know, but a lot of times I'll just get no no response. And really? uh, Davy has been incredible. I mean, he helped me really lift Mrs. Kasha up. Oh, Davis I love that. From where I was uh, when I first started, because really when I first auditioned for Drag Race, it was a part time gig that I did with Aggie Dune on the side. You right, know, right? And and it has evolved ever since I mean, because it's still of people evolving. like yourself always evolving if you're not learning you're not living i mean like i said we're we're here in the beginning of the year it's it's there's so much ahead of us i do think like imagination station is going to take over the world i feel like we're just waiting for like this one i always think this maybe it's crazy there's just like one investor just to drop out and go you know what i love your brunch Let's figure out a way to make this. I have the contacts because we all want so, you know, we don't all have all the contacts. Right. And sometimes there are PD people waiting to make this connection. And there has to be somebody that jumps in the middle that goes, actually, I know who wants to do this right. and outside you know, of a nightclub. It's probably a listener yeah. right now who is managing a chain of hotels right. or is a manager at hotels and is connected. And what what better than right. to be at a, a popular hotel chain? The queens can stay at the hotel, get ready at the hotel. They can comp the rooms. They perform in the in the banquet room. They already know how to do a buffet. Right. And, you know, you can bring in, uh, as you always should, bring in some of the gals uh, locally and then a group of us that would tour around. I really would, think would that you would be do the, Would you do this at, like, a Motel 6? <laughs> Actually, so you yeah, yourself is it, having is it, like a, is it the what's the what's the red roof? The red roof. The red it? roof. Because I've those, been to a nice red roof before. Uh -huh. What kind of hotel do you like to stay in? If you had your if somebody said, we're going to put you up wherever and you were doing a gig for like two days. Stay Pineapple. What's it's that? called Stay Pineapple. It's a boutique hotel. Okay. It is overly decorated. It is ridiculously gorgeous. They have the best comforters that are like this. Oh, and there's wow. two. And they have a little stuffed husky puppy on your oh. bed that you can buy, of course. And they they're pet friendly. And they, they have multiple different locations. Stay Pineapple. They're fantastic. And they love the Queens. I love that. I love that. I've never been there. Yeah. I you would you would love it. And, of course, there's, pine there's pineapple-shaped cookies that you get free. And every night, like, you get, like, this, like, so much money that you can get snacks or coffee or cocktails. Every day you have to spend your, like, so much, 10 or $20. Pineapple. Stay Pineapple. Are you now, a apparently, swinger? I think if that would mean I might be a swinger. People have said that. Like, upside that it, down pineapple. Upside down pineapple. Yeah, because I've posted, fine. I've posted photos so that maybe I would get like a you know just count. Right. Um, it didn't happen. But people are like, "Are you and Mr. Davis swingers?" No, but we no. have key parties. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. This oh, is a blast. Honestly, I have so the moment I met you. I've always loved you, and it's Thank such an honor to be you. here. The moment that you were like, "Oh, what, why not?" I 
change the flight. I'm going to be there. I'm so, so glad you did. Thank yeah, you so much. You're the best. Everybody Thank loves you. you. Um, that's all the time we have. This is, of course, Mrs. Kasha Davis. Where can people find you on social media? Where do you want them to find well, you? Well, they can find me on Insta, Snatch, Twatter, and FacePlace, mostly. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is that sounds like an upside down pineapple. That's an upside. No, honestly, all the places at Mrs. Kasha Davis. Mrs. Kasha Davis. Yeah. Now, is there any? Do you have a preference for? Uh, are you like a Facebook person, Instagram person, Instagram person? Yeah. I, I Facebook is mostly the you know advertisement and local stuff, and uh, Instagram is my favorite. Mr. Davis loves to do the TikTok. He sits I and love d- it. he loves it, and honestly. There's a creativity level there that I don't like. I don't know what to do. And he's so funny. He's like, do this, try this. I'm like, whatever. Just make me do this. And then they're fun. They're fun. They're fun yeah. to watch, yeah. at least. They're fun to watch. Thank you all so much for listening to Very Delta. You can now search for Very Delta on your podcast apps. We come out every Monday and we want you to subscribe so you do not miss an episode. Um, also, a special hello to everyone watching the talk show on YouTube. We love you. And also, you know what's Very Delta? subscribing to mom podcast so you don't miss an episode you can send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com and you can follow me on instagram at delta work and if you want dedicated socials clips um updates anything like that you can follow very delta on instagram and on tiktok their brand new accounts they have everything and you can join me right here next week and until then keep things very delta next episode Margaret Cho, is here getting very Delta. Yeah, I love a drive through well, if, you, if you had to pick like a place right now if you were hungry, what would be like a go-to? El Pollo Loco. Really? Yes. Okay. What do you like to have there? Well, I like the Baja taco that has shrimp in it, but that it's seasonal. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. Hold up. 